our next generation portable is officially named PlayStation Vita. Vita. That's right, Vita does indeed mean life. Welcome everyone to the second episode of our little show for December 2019 in our ongoing series dedicated to news, detailing upcoming games and sharing what I've been playing for the past month all on the PlayStation Vita. So with that out of the way, let's get into the news. Okay, it's been two months, there's got to be something. So let's open a little mailbox. Really? Really? Not even a firmware update? If no news was good news, Vita would be the king. So, as usual, let's get into what I've been playing this month on the PlayStation Vita. So a little background information on the first one. Last month I forgot to include a game that released on the cusp of the month called Miles and Kilo. I had no idea this game existed. So I got in touch with the developer, Four Horses, and he told me that the game is actually a sequel to a, a game that released earlier in the year. And he actually sent me a code, but I've only played the first one so far, and that is Kid Trip. So Kid Trip is an automatic runner, so if you ever played something like Jetpack Joyride, you know the concept. But unlike Jetpack Joyride, which is dynamically generated, Kid Trip is meticulously designed. Now from the gameplay, it looks like a platform, but it's not. It's a game of memorization and timing. It only requires two buttons. That's a jump and a projectile mechanic. The projectile mechanic is just, uh, it just throws stones in front of him to kill any enemies that might be in your way. But the jump mechanic is where the depth of the gameplay is. Because depending on if you press the jump button softly, hold the jump button, don't press the jump button at all, holding the jump button after you're hitting an enemy, it all differs the length of your jump and so you'll need precise timing depending on which type of uh, jump action to get to the next enemy or the next platform and that's where the depth of the game comes because you'd have to keep replaying the level. Each level is only about 20 seconds long but it'll require a constant trial and error so that means a lot of deaths to uh, figure out the pattern of the level. Now you can get through the level by not doing it perfect but like I said throwing the stone to kill enemies in front of you you might bungle your way through the, through the level but there is a perfect line, like a racing game, where you can collect all the coins. And you'll find yourself, once you've done it, once you've like died 20 times, you've finally figured out a level, you end up going back to the level, and you can do it without losing any lives, because now you know the pattern of the game. That's the biggest takeaway I've found from this game. When I first approached it, I thought, oh, this is really difficult. And there's even a trophy of completing the whole game without losing one life, which sounds impossible when you first play it. With it now you'll get extremely adept and you'll end up, like me, being addicted to it for a few days to get the platinum trophy. Thankfully when you do die a lot as well, it's an instant restart. There's no loading screens or anything like that. And that's what's fun about the game because if you've got 5-10 minutes to spare, you play a few sessions on the game and you just put it down and you don't have to think about it. But you will. You'll end up wanting to stop whatever you're doing and just play the game. Now part of the Platinum is you can beat the developer's time, so you'll have fun with that. The only drawback I did notice from the game was there is a slowdown mechanic where your character stops running and starts walking, but I noticed the speed was so negligible that I didn't even use it. It seemed pointless to be honest. But yeah, that's Kid Trip. I do recommend it. And like I said, the, this is a prequel. And the sequel came out about a month ago, which is Miles and Kilo. And I do have a code for that that Mick sent me. So I'll start playing that soon and I'll put it in the next video. And so next up is The Wolf Among Us from Telltale Games. Well, Telltale have gone through a bit of a tumultuous time recently. I mean, they did close down and I think they've reopened again under a different company. Back when they did The Walking Dead the first season, the games were all the rage, you know. Until people started figuring out the games were all the same, it's just a different coat of paint. And The Wolf Among Us was one of these games. Now, as a game, it's perfectly fine. In fact, the story is very good. If you don't know, it's about fables. So like Red Riding Hood, Sleeping Beauty, all that type of thing, living in the real world. And you follow the main character of Bigsby, who's the big bad wolf and sheriff of Fable Town. So it's a little silly, obviously, the concept, but it's basically a murder mystery game. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot of gameplay. In fact, I'm not even sure a lot of times why they added gameplay to certain places. So you'll see like a, a cutscene and then it'll switch to your character. You can move around for about three seconds and it'll be back to a cutscene. It is pointless. 
So yeah, I'd say it has even less gameplay than something like Spirit Hunter NG that I mentioned last month. It feels closer to a visual novel game than an adventure game to be honest. But the biggest issue with the game is the port. For some reason, it's a terrible port. There's uh, textures missing, like you have on the internet where you've got a, re a little uh, a white box or a red X. You'll have that in the game because the texture's completely missing. Or you'll have times when the game starts, but it's just a black screen, so you just hear the noise and the music. And it takes about 10, 15 seconds for the picture to catch up. It's just, I don't understand how this got through testing. I do recommend the game itself, if you like these type of games, but I wouldn't recommend the Vita version. I'd go with whatever console you may have, like the PlayStation 4 or whatever. In fact, if you've got a PlayStation 4, you could remote play this game and get a far better experience, the natural, the native version. And I'm curious if we'll ever get a sequel now that Telltale have kind of been reborn, but I doubt it because I don't believe Telltale ever owned any of the IP. I think they just they made games off other people's IP, so maybe the rights are expired by now. I don't know. So yeah, that's uh, The Wolf Among Us. My final game that I played this month is Factotum 90. This is from Tax Games, who I mentioned last month that developed Super Skull Smash, which is a game I highly recommended. This one is uh, very different. It's a 3D puzzle game where you switch between two spider-like robots to solve puzzles within a spaceship. Now the spaceship is separated into a lot of levels. And there is a story, it's not very in-depth obviously, you, and you get to hold it in little snippets as you begin each level from a character on the ship. But the thing you'll instantly notice is how ugly it looks. In fact, it looks like a PlayStation 1 game. Like I said, the gameplay is perfectly fine, There's nothing to write home about. You basically just switch between two of the robots that just walk about and you can use one to activate a switch while you, you press onto the other one to pass the gap or whatever. It's, it's, it's nothing to write home about, it's, it's quite bland to be honest. And a far cry from their last game. So I wouldn't recommend this unless you're a hardcore puzzle gamer that's into this type of thing. Or if you fancy seeing what a PlayStation 1 game looks like. So that's all the games I've been playing this month. So let's look at what games are coming out in December. As I've mentioned previously, it's pretty hard to find information on upcoming game titles for the PlayStation Vita. So if you are a developer or a fan of a game that you know is coming out, be sure to let me know either on Twitter or in the comments below on YouTube. But here are the games that I do know. So the first two may already be out depending on your region and if they aren't out they'll be coming early December. And the first one is Foxyland from Rattalika Games. Help Foxy Fox on a dangerous journey to rescue his love Jenny. Without your help Foxy won't be able to save her. Jump and dodge past challenging enemies and traps while collecting gems and cherries across 36 levels. Dress up Foxy by purchasing additional accessories for him using the cherries you collect on your journey. This looks like a, a fun platformer, probably the type of thing I would play, and <laughs> who wouldn't want to play as Foxy Fox? <laughs> now again, this one may already be out depending on your region, but if not, it'll be out early December. And that's Pick a Picks Classic 2 from Lightwood Games. The latest installment in the popular Picture Crossword series. Pick a Picks is a picture logic game, sometimes known as Picross, Nonogram or Hanji, hope I'm pronouncing that right where whimsical pixel art pictures are created by solving puzzles. Pick a Pix Classic 2 features 150 brand new single colour puzzles from 15x15 15 15 up to 30x20 grids. I'll be honest, I've never played a, a Pick a Pix game. I do see these quite often on the Vita, are they any good? Let me know if you are a fan and if they're worth playing. Now last of the digital games out in December, on December 10th we have Shovel Knight King of Cards from Yacht Club Games. Shovel Knight King of Cards is final campaign in the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove Saga and it's bigger and grander than ever. Step into the regal shoes of King Knight, the gilded goon himself, as you shoulder bash and spin jump through all who would oppose your reign. Travel through four new worlds and more than 30 all new courses, all on a journey to best the three kings who lord over the land. Discover what it takes to become a true monarch, meet a friend or two and amass a king's ransom in items and loot. Refined platforming, exquisite visuals, story with a heart, action-packed courses, glorious new bosses and more await in Shovel Knight King of Cards. Now, if you already own Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, this is a free DLC. And if you don't own that, obviously you can purchase that and get the game. I don't believe this is going to be a separate game, it's only going to be a part of the pack. Now we've also got two physical releases, releasing in December, once again from East Asia Soft. 
and the first is Knit Underground, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I believe this launched very early in the PlayStation Vita lifecycle, I seem to recall that, I think it was on the PlayStation 3 as well. Anyway, it's a 2D adventure Metroidvania, and the other game is for the perverts among us, hey, I'm not judging, and that's Pantsu Hunter, so if you're into uh, 2D girls and dating sims, well, godspeed, that one's for you. I'll be sure to leave links for both the physical games in the description below. So that's all the releases for December, and like I said, if you know of a game coming out in the next few months, if you are a developer or a fan of a game that you know is coming out, then be sure to let me know, either on YouTube or on Twitter. And so that's it for this month. The next video in this series won't be out until after Christmas, so I'm wishing you all a Merry Christmas. I'll likely put it out in that limbo between New Year and Christmas where nothing's really going on. And also be sure to let me know what you're going to be playing over the Christmas break. And as always, don't forget, Epstein never killed himself.